Democrats feeling confident of their chances to retake the House as we head into the 2018 midterms. This as 30 House Republicans are announcing uh, that they will not seek re-election, leaving many key seats up for grabs. How likely is it that Democrats can regain the majority in the House of Representatives? Here now to debate that is Republican strategist Charlie Kirk and Democratic strategist and Fox News contributor Jammu Green. Uh, guys, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Uh, Jammu, I want to start with you. Uh, some analysts are saying that it's a virtual certainty that uh, the Dems take back the House here in just about, uh, what, seven months or eight months. Uh, what say you? No, no, you can't say that. Let me... Take us back to when Hillary Clinton first announced her presidency. One of the first internal campaign memos that went out to Democratic strategists had the first line said, we're not going to take any vote for granted. There are many people who think they did the exact opposite. Mm. And now President Trump is in the White House. The last thing Democrats need to do is be overconfident. While it is certainly winnable, the House, for Democrats, we have to be smart in the same way that I think the party was smart in 2017, where we saw Democrats outperforming. The enthusiasm is on Democrats' side. There are only 24 seats that Democrats need to pick up, and I believe about 23 of those were districts that Hillary mm. Clinton beat Donald Trump in. So there's certainly statistics that are looking favorable for Democrats, but the last thing we need to do is to think that we've got this in the bag. Yeah, and, and, and Charlie, let's go over to you. It's actually 10 months. I just got to count that up in my head uh, while Jamu was talking. It's a little early, but you've got a lot of you got a lot of Republicans yeah. not running here. Uh, do they do they see the warning signs? What what is the reason for so many uh, not going into the fight again? Well, well, look, it's not necessarily, I think, the most fun job in the world. And a lot of these uh, congressmen that are uh, stepping down, you know, they've been doing this for many years. But I will say there's a lot of good points that were said there. And I think it's very dangerous for Democrats to think that they're automatically going to win the House. Here's what's working for them. What's working for them is that the, the party not in the White House usually does very, very well in midterm elections, especially the first midterm election after a presidential. So I will give the Democrats that. Here's what's really not working very well. The Democrat Party right now is in total shambles, especially financially. Financially, I mean, they're in debt. Yeah. Look at the Republican Party. They smashed fundraising records. They raised over $130 million. And also, the Democrat Party, I think, really missed a lot of opportunities here to work with the president, especially on middle class tax reform. You know, they had zero Democrat votes at all in the, the biggest middle class tax cut in American history. And you see all these jobs coming back to America and all this economic activity. There's going to be a lot of, I think, voters that are going to say, wait, what have Democrats done for me lately except say they want to impeach this president? So, m m Despite a lot of the historical trends putting in the Democrat favor, I think this going to be a lot tighter than people think. Finally, there's 12 seats that Trump won that are held by Democrat congressmen right now. So there's just as many opportunities on the Republican side as there are the Democrats. Interesting. You know, Jammu, I, I think a lot of people don't really vote based on identity politics and talking points. It doesn't turn a lot of people on. I think what really does is, is their current situation. When unemployment is down and uh, you know wages are higher, if people got more money in their pockets, uh, it, it is going going to be interesting to see how they react when it comes time to make a decision on what we're going to do politically, because if the Democrats do take back uh, one of these houses, it's going to effectively shut down the president and a lot of the things he wants to do, right? But that's the that's one important point, because Americans actually do believe in our system of checks and balances. They do want to make sure that there is going to be some balance uh, to, to stop maybe some of the more extreme uh, opportunities that a part that has control of the House and the White House mm -hmm. and the Senate. Uh, so I, I think that actually plays into the hands of Democrats, where you're going to have a lot of voters saying, look, I just want to have the ability for the House to put some brakes on some of the things that the Trump administration might want to do. And I think just to, to right. go to the point of like how much money is out there for, for Democratic candidates, one thing that people are not paying attention to are the record numbers of dollars that 
what the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is raising and the Senatorial Campaign Committee is raising. It's not about what the DNC is doing. It, it, it's about what these yeah. Congressional yeah. Campaign Committees are doing. And, and we're seeing a lot of fire, a lot of enthusiasm there. But again, I'd say throw all of that out of the window. Yep. Every campaign needs to be a campaign we are desperately running yeah. from behind. You can't, you can't take anything yeah. for granted. We learned Correct. that last year. Guys, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. All right.